So that stencil jig costs about $1.25 um, in PLA and print time. And in this video, I'm going to show you my entire process on how I do that. So let's get into it. All right, so generally, if you're going to get a stencil for your PCB, if you're doing, you know, PCB reflow uh, at home or wherever, you know, you're familiar with these stencil printers. And they cost, you know, between $300 and $2,000-ish. And the idea is that you take your stencil, which is in a framework, and then you bolt it into the machine, and then you will fine-tune adjust these rails for the, um, the PCB. So you place PCB in there, fold it down, squeegee across your solder paste, and rinse and repeat. And the thing is, like, with these things, you're, you're pretty much set up for one particular PCB and one particular stencil for your line. And if you have multiple PCB designs, uh, like I do, you know, swapping them out is a pain because you have to readjust and you either get more than one or or whatever. They take up a lot of space, you know, your stencil takes up a lot of space because it's in a framework, etc. So not ideal. You know, I have this custom PCB here that I've designed. I can get it exported. I can export here this button, one click export to like JLC. And what you'll want to do is, you know, in my case I have it uh, panelized to five by seven and uh, with the rails and they're five millimeters, right? If I get a stencil, the default is, it's pretty big. It's like 380 by 280 for this size. It's the smallest size you can get for default, $7, right? One thing that I highly recommend is you're gonna go here, click yes on customize size, customize size. In this case, I wanna do 120 millimeters square, right? Uh, and that's gonna be, you know, we have five millimeter rails. Uh, that's gonna be about, 20 millimeters margin on each dimension, right? So I'm just like actually 10 millimeters. So left and right, top and bottom, 10 millimeters each. Um, that's enough space to, to handle the, the PCBs. And plus, it's going to fit in, you know, these blue boxes that uh, they send the PCB in. So you get one box instead of two, one giant box and one little box. You're going to get it all in one box. And that's going to sa save on shipping. So rather than shipping being like $20, $50 shipping is substantially less, especially if you order like, you know, global uh, direct line, you can get shipping down for like less than 10 bucks. So uh, let's get into the, the design of the stencil jig itself. If you're doing panelization, that's going to be under tools, panelize. Um, you can rely on, on GLC's panelization, but to get the actual design of the panel, you want to do this process in Easy EDA. Here I have uh, five columns and seven rows, and then we have the five millimeter edge rails. So we have technology side, which is going to be yes, five millimeters. Uh, and in this case, it's going to be left and right. You can do all objects or board outline. I'm going to do the design in Fusion. So even if your computer is great, Fusion is going to chug if you have all of the features in the board. So you can, you can try doing all objects, but board outline should be enough. Um, so we're going to confirm that. You can see here, it places one in Fusion. Once you get these features, you can just rectangular pattern them across. But you can have this. Let's check the uh, 3D preview. Right. Um, 3D preview looks good. Um, it's going to be here. One problem that you get with um, doing board outline only is, like, I have these cutouts. Uh, and those don't show up, right? So all the holes in, or the uh, the cuts in my PCB aren't going to show up across all of these, which could be important sometimes. Once you have this kind of verified, you're going to want to go to export DXF here. And then the defaults for these are generally fine. I think they default it for the stencil, the solder paste mask stencil right export here it's going to download as a file right to your downloads okay and then we're going to go into fusion and we're going to do insert dxf okay we're going to select the file from my computer that one i, I choose the uh, xy plane doesn't really matter and we're going to hit OK. And you can see here that Fusion has these, which you can pattern, right? Uh, and these dimensions are going to be accurate, 
with infusion. So you have to realize that because of manufacturing tolerances and print tolerances, you're going to want to add some fudge there. So you're going to go to um, parameters and you're going to add a parameter, like tolerance or something. And, you know, it, it took me like five prints to, to really dial these in. But for, for these jigs, you're going to want to have um, 0 0.3 millimeters, right? Uh, and that's that's pretty good. They give you a little bit of play for holding on to the... Um, PCB and a little bit of play for holding on to the stencil, but that should be enough. Okay. Uh, this is not a fusion tutorial, so I'm just going to skip straight to my design and I'll show you the important features that you're going to want to know. Right. So you can see here, here is that same stencil. I have this one repeating all the components from the export. You don't have to do that. It makes it chug really hard, but you could do that. I have these slots here. These slots are important. You're going to want to have some way to pick up the PCB out of the stencil because, like, you're going to have a tight outline here. And so when you drop the PCB in there, you can't really get it out unless you have some features to, to either stick your fingernail underneath and grab it or, you know, a tool or whatever. So I have these slots designed in, and then I have a larger slot here that is wide enough for my finger that I can just grab um, the stencil off the top. And I'll show you what that looks like. So here's the jig, and this is all basic just extrusions. And so extrude everything. You're going to want to do the top outline up. And in this case, you want to go double the thickness of your stencil. Uh, I use some calipers. The stencil, in my case, is stainless steel at 0.2 millimeters in thickness. So here I have um, 0.4 millimeters of height for this, this main frame up here. Uh, and then, you know, the height of this depth here is uh, 1.6 millimeters, which is the PCB. And you can double check those heights when you order. You know, the default is 1.6 millimeters here. Uh, and so that's the depth of this cutout for uh, the PCB itself. The other uh, important dimension is how much plastic you're going to have underneath supporting everything. And in my case, I found that 3 millimeters is plenty to make a rigid jig um, and that'll be durable and, and kind of hold everything flat right so three millimeters down from the bottom of the PCB um, the total height here is going to be five millimeters right so it's gonna be 0.4 for the stencil 1.6 for the PCB and three for the bottom right so that's five millimeters total uh, and then you can give it a quick eyeball. I, I modeled in the stencil, what that looks like. It looks like that, right? This feature up here, it, it's just a slot, and I go down most of the way it's so that I can lift this up and place it in there uh, when I'm swapping boards, right? If I'm doing more than one, place it in there, squeegee it, drop it down. It makes it a lot faster rather than having to, like, move it off of the thing. It's nice to have that sitting in there. And then turn off everything except for the jig itself and then you're going to do export and then I recommend exporting as a step file um, that's going to be the most accurate and it won't give you like weird polygons on surfaces and stuff like that it's going to be uh, tr um, true curves and it's also going to be uh, with units included so you don't have to worry about like is this thing going to print the right size export it and then you're going to go to your slicer software I'm using Bamboo Studio here. Import the step file, uh, and there's a few things that you need to um, check. I would say, you know, you could do adaptive layer heights um, to make it faster to print, but honestly, the quality is going to be slightly better if you use equal layer heights. So ignore adaptive. I'm running at a 0.12 millimeter layer height. That's fine, as long as it's less than the, the stencil. Like, you know, ideally less than half the stencil thickness, um, you're, you're probably good. Um, so, like, for example, if you were to do the standard, which is 0.2, that's, a, that's the thickness of the stencil. I would not do that high. I would go, you know, 0.12 or 0.08 for the layer height. And then you're going to turn on ironing for top surfaces. Um, this will be important to make sure that there's no kind of, like, bumps or whatever that's going to push the PCB above its plane. Uh, so that everything kind of sits flat and flush. Okay. Um, you can see here, slice this thing here. It's going to be about two and a half hours um, 
total time. Um, you know, it's got like bed leveling and whatever it's included in there. But, uh, you know, compared to shipping, it, it's fast enough. This particular jig took me like mm, four or five prints to dial in the tolerance to 0.3. I think for the material, PLA, 0.3 is going to be fine. You definitely do not want to print this in other materials like ABS. Uh, because those shrink, right? So print it in something that's very dimensionally stable, like PLA. Um, and a 0.3 millimeter tolerance, you know, for all of the walls should be sufficient. And that's going to give you a tiny amount of play, um, but not enough to kind of make the positioning of the pads and the solder application off by too much. Uh, and so you're good for down to like, I would say 0402 is about the limit for the accuracy for the stencil jig, right? If you're, if you're doing below that, then you're not hand soldering it anyways and so you should probably invest in something more expensive but um for you know a dollar 25 this thing fits in the envelope that the stencil fits in and i can just chuck it onto the shelf and not have to worry about setting up a machine to do a print run for this particular pcb i can swap them in and out uh, and like you saw in the video you know i use my left hand i'm not left-handed um and it was super simple to just place it down and squeegee with my left hand it took like what, five seconds, uh, which is considerably faster than setting up a whole stencil print machine. Yeah, it's just better. Do yourself a favor, print your own jig for holding your stencil. Yeah, I would love to see what everybody's making uh, with their own stencils and PCB man manufacturing at home. So uh, give me a like and follow if you want to see more like this. Cheers.